Today is Friday, April 14th. We'll tell you who's been arrested for the highest profile intelligence leak in years and what fallout is still coming from that leak. Also, which state is the latest to outlaw most abortions and why the Supreme Court is getting ready to weigh in on the issue again. Plus, what could be a record-breaking sale for an NFL team wrapped in controversy? Why a new high-tech gun is said to be safer than others on the market? And how you can watch the most popular U.S. music festival from home this weekend? Those stories and more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The FBI now thinks it's tracked down the person responsible for leaking U.S. government secrets. A member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard was arrested yesterday, accused of posting hundreds of pages of classified American intelligence documents online. He's an IT specialist responsible for military communications networks. And authorities say the documents he leaked included sensitive information about Russia's invasion of Ukraine and other top national security issues. Some documents even make it look like the U.S. is spying on certain allies. It's all believed to have started on a site called Discord, which is popular with people playing online games. Then it made it onto the Telegram platform that's widespread in Russia. And that's when it really started drawing the attention of the U.S. government. Now the U.S. Attorney General says the Justice Department is still investigating, and the Pentagon is reviewing its intelligence access and control procedures to keep a leak like this from happening again. Meanwhile, officials say they're looking into the impact the leak has had on the war in Ukraine and relations between the U.S. and its allies. To be continued. So the controversial case over the so-called abortion pill is heading to the Supreme Court now. There's been a lot happening with this case in the last week. First, there was an unprecedented ruling by a federal judge in Texas that reversed the FDA's approval of Mifepristone, since he said the FDA did not adequately assess its safety. Then a federal appeals court blocked that ruling partially. It said the FDA's authorization could stay in place with restrictions. Like it said, patients will only have access after at least three in-person doctor's visits and not by mail. It also can only be taken within the first seven weeks of pregnancy instead of the first 10, as the FDA had approved. And the generic version of the pill was suspended. Well, now the Justice Department says it's not okay with either ruling. And it'll be asking the Supreme Court to, quote, defend the FDA's scientific judgment. Legal experts expect the high court to act quickly on this one, making this the biggest abortion case they've taken up since they overruled Roe v. Wade. Of course, that was the decision that gave states the power to decide what to do about abortion. And just this week, another big state decided to ban the procedure for most people. Florida's governor just signed a law that makes it illegal to get an abortion after six weeks of pregnancy unless it's needed to save the woman's life. And this impacts people even beyond Florida, since some people who live in the Deep South have been traveling to the state for the procedure. Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi have banned abortions at all stages of pregnancy, and Georgia outlined the procedure after a heartbeat can be detected, which is also around six weeks. So now women looking for an abortion in those states will need to travel as far as North Carolina or Illinois, where providers have already been overwhelmed with demand. Florida Republicans who sponsored the bill say it's about protecting life and giving every child the opportunity to be born. But Democrats who are against it say it makes Florida less free. Since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last June, roughly a dozen states have banned most abortions. Forecasters say it's the kind of storm you only see every 1,000 or 2,000 years. South Florida got slammed with torrential rain. In Fort Lauderdale, nearly 26 inches came down in just 24 hours. And that's equal to almost 40% of the average for an entire year. It breaks the state's 24-hour rain record, and a little more rain is still coming down today. Homes, businesses, schools, and highways are flooded. Some people were stranded in their cars for hours yesterday. Others were seen using canoes and kayaks just to navigate their streets. Also, the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport had to shut down because of debris and massive flooding. The airport is actually still closed right now as we publish this episode, but it is expected to open back up later this morning. Now the thunderstorms are expected to spread across other parts of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Though for now, it doesn't look like things will get quite as bad. Even more wet weather could be on the way for the southern U.S. The federal agency known as NOAA issued an El Nino watch for this summer. That's the weather phenomenon known to bring increased rain and sometimes disastrous flooding to the south, while northern parts of the U.S. typically see warmer and drier weather than usual. It means the climate pattern is shifting, since La Nina ended at the beginning of last month. 
La Nina is usually associated with worsening drought and more severe hurricanes. So it was a relief for a lot of people to see that one go. But this year, the hurricane season might not be so bad. Colorado State University released its 2023 Atlantic hurricane season forecast yesterday. It's predicting six hurricanes and two major hurricanes, which is below the typical season average. But of course, it only takes one big storm to make landfall and really impact people who live near the coast. So they're encouraging people to prepare the same as they do for every season by putting together emergency kits, reviewing insurance policies, and coming up with emergency plans way ahead of time. More news is still coming up, but first, a quick shout out to our sponsor. Here on the show, we will be talking about Earth Day later this month. In fact, all of April is considered Earth Month, so it's a great time to be thinking about and talking about the simple ways we can all be more sustainable in our own lives, from sticking with reusable water bottles to bringing reusable bags to the grocery store to even buying from Rothy's when I need new shoes. Yes, I can buy new shoes knowing they were designed with the planet in mind, since they were made with Rothy's signature thread repurposed from single-use plastic bottles. And because Rothy's shoes and bags are durably designed, they can stay in my closet longer. I can even pop them in the washing machine if they need a refresh. Plus, my Rothy's shoes are chic and comfortable, and they can be worn with so many different outfits, dressy or casual. If you're looking to re-energize your spring wardrobe, you can feel good about buying and wearing Rothy's. And I love all the options. Rothy's has vibrant shoes and bags in a range of bright hues. For stylish and sustainable shoes, shop Rothy's. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy. There's word the Washington Commander's owner has agreed to sell the NFL team for a record-breaking amount of money. Reports from Sportico and the New York Times say owner Dan Snyder reached an agreement in principle to sell the football team to private equity investor Josh Harris, who, by the way, already owns an NBA team, an NHL team, and a Premier League soccer team. This agreement comes as the NFL looks into allegations of widespread sexual harassment and financial improprieties within the commander's organization. Because of those allegations, backlash from the team's fans and issues with building a new stadium, many other NFL owners were considering forcing Snyder to sell the team. Now it looks like they won't have to. For now, the commanders, NFL, and Josh Harris are not commenting publicly about the agreement, but the reports say Harris is buying the team for $6 billion, and that would make this the most expensive sale in NFL history. This latest sale still has to be approved by the NFL's Finance Committee and at least three-quarters of the other team owners, and the next time they meet is next month. The NFL and its Players Association have approved a new helmet design specifically to help quarterbacks avoid concussions. It's said to lower the severity of helmet-to-ground impacts. And the league data shows those account for about half of quarterback concussions. And that includes the one Miami quarterback Tua Tungovailoa suffered in a game last year when he had to be taken off the field by an ambulance. The NFL now says this is the helmet that has performed best in lab testing. But it's not clear how many QBs will actually make the switch. The league and players union say they'll share all the information from the helmet studies with teams so players can decide for themselves. The world's first smart gun has just hit the market. The idea behind it is to improve gun safety since no one can shoot it except the owner. The BioFire smart gun uses fingerprints and 3D infrared facial recognition technology to make sure the person holding it is actually authorized to use it. It unlocks in less than a second, then quickly locks again when the gun leaves the authorized user's hand. The company behind it, BioFire Technologies, says the idea is to keep dangerous weapons out of the hands of criminals and children. But some gun rights advocates are skeptical it will make much of a difference, since they say the same people who would be interested in such a thing are probably those who would have their guns safely locked up anyway. The smart gun is available for pre-order now with a $150 deposit. That puts you in line to pay more than $1,300 more when the weapon is actually ready to ship. So overall, this smart gun will end up costing somewhere between double and triple the price of a standard model Glock. It's another sign of a big travel rebound. Delta Airlines is reporting a record number of advanced bookings for this summer, even though the price of airfare is up. It's not just Delta either. This week, Expedia reported flight searches are up 25% for trips in June through August. And for international destinations across Europe and Asia, Expedia says interest is up triple digits. So airlines say they're working on making sure they have all their resources ready to handle the influx of passengers. Still, the FAA says summer travelers should prepare for delays, since there's a shortage of airline workers and air traffic controllers. 
The biggest and most famous music festival in the U.S. is happening this weekend. The first weekend of Coachella kicks off today in Indio, California. It's featuring its most global and diverse slate of headliners to date. Today, the original Blink-182 members will reunite for their first performance since 2015, and then Bad Bunny will be tonight's headliner. Tomorrow night will be headlined by Blackpink. And then Sunday, it's Frank Ocean. Other performers this weekend include Rosalia, Gorillaz, Blondie, Kid Leroy, and many more. More than 125,000 fans are expected each day of the festival. But if you're not able to make it out in person, YouTube will be streaming live from all the festival stages with six different live streams so you can watch from home. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you on extra feel-good or positive news story before the weekend. Today, we're talking about a PhD student who's taking uninhabitable homes in war-torn parts of Ukraine and making them livable again. Harry Blackiston Houston is replacing glass windows that have been damaged by bullets and bombs with new windows he's designed. They're made with polyethylene, PVC piping, pipe insulation, and duct tape. Blackiston Houston says they have four layers of insulation to protect against the cold. Hundreds of these windows have already been installed across Ukraine, and now there have been requests for thousands more. So Blackiston Houston is pausing his studies in biotechnology to concentrate on this project. He wants to create hubs across Ukraine that can replace any shattered window within 24 hours. A lot of the work will be carried out by local people, but Blackiston Houston will show them how and help them get a hold of the materials. He's now looking for more partners to support his work and is accepting donations. So we did link to this project called Insulate Ukraine in today's episode notes. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode all about the U.S. housing market. We're talking with Redfin's chief economist who breaks down the data and offers some advice. Then join us again Monday for your next news roundup. For now, thank you so much for listening and have a great weekend. 